So. All right, many thanks for staying with us. Welcome back. This is still why in the morning we are talking about Agritech Solutions and we are speaking to Kizito Odhiambo. He is the CEO of Agribora. Before we went on a break, you're trying to explain to us uh, how, uh, how it's so important for us to propel this conversation to the interior. So how is the government trying to uh, plug in as well? Um, so I think the government is really... One thing that we need to appreciate is that uh, because the agriculture sector is also a devolved activity, the county governments are really picking up. And um, one of the latest um, activities that the government has undertaken, which I must commend, is uh, the Kenya Climate Smart Agriculture Program that is uh, funded by the World Bank and the Kenya government to support counties uh, become more uh, climate resilient with their farmers. Now what that means is the county governments have accepted to take up disruptive agricultural technologies that have been developed by innovators within Kenya and outside Kenya mm -hmm. to be able to expand this into their, uh, into their wards. So for us as Agribora, we have uh, been working with county governments, we have signed MOUs with county governments, and they have really opened the doors for us to go and talk to their farmers, their cooperatives, their community-based organizations. Because right. that's the main entry point, building trust with farmers to mm. trust a technology. It's very right. difficult. Especially in the interior. Especially in the interior. You know, right. uh, there's a lot of uh, cyber crime and all this that happens. So when you come right. to a farmer and you tell them, I want to pick the GPS position and right. I have a satellite that can analyze your field every five days, the first question they'll ask you is, who gave you permission to put that satellite on top of me? Right. right. And yet it's not actually even our satellite as Kenya or even in Africa. It's a satellite that belongs to other people outside of the continent. Mm. Um, so just explaining why having access to that data is important and how that can help them right. is quite an uphill battle. Mm. So Would the you county say that's government, one of the main challenges as well? Like trying to, you know, go down to to that level, convincing this uh, yeah, old lady yeah. or this old man that yes, I, ha I have an alternative and yeah. it is best in tech. Would you say it's one of the barriers that you face, especially when it comes to boosting agri-tech? Um, mostly. Mostly that's one of the challenge that the uptake is low because well, they just don't understand the technology and how it works. Okay. It's, uh, it's like trying to convince a customer about the engine and how the engine works of a car for them to buy it. And yet right. the customer just saw this car, you know, on the advert and said, this is what I want. Right. So we take a lot of time explaining what is under the hood and right. we lose our clientele, we lose our farmers because then the risks and the questions arise and say, okay, now you want me to have a wallet, you will steal my money. Uh, you are now using geo data to monitor me. Why are you spying on me? Right. So these challenges. At the end of the day, it would be best if farmers don't actually know what technology is being used. If you, you just think help it would be them. best if they don't know? If they just know two things. You or know, if they know or if they don't know? If they don't know. Let me explain why. Wow, that's scary. You know, uh, <laughs> if a farmer, you tell a farmer, I am right. going to help you access finance uh -huh. and I'm going to give you a market. All right. The how is what complicates things. Mm -hmm. Because when you talk to farmers and you tell them, do you want to access climate smart information and you know climate change is happening, you lose them okay. most of the time. So it's not that you want to uh, keep them in, uh, in the dark. It's you need to be able to apportion the information and how you share it with the farmers. Right. If they really want to know how the engine of the, of the car works, right. they will go to the mechanic and they will take a whole three hour session and say, hey, this is what goes here and this is what happens. But what's right. under the hood is not relevant, but that is what we actually finance most of the time. So when you come back to how government and also development agencies work, you realize there is a lot of money that goes into agriculture to solve issues uh, in terms of how to improve machine learning models. You know? So you have a lot of funding that goes into technology itself, right. but not in the product. Nobody is willing to fund the product. People right. are willing to fund the innovation, the creativity. Yeah. And that's where we lose it because you right. have a lot of money. We get approached and there's more money for us to sort of get our models better and better, but right. there's still no farmer who is able to get a product out of it because we are still not uh, very close to our farmers with the technology. So I think right. 
those are some of the reasons why we see that farmers are not really willing to take this up because we are not solving the immediate problem. Right. We are still uh, we are still enjoying how cool technology could be and what it could do for us. Right. And so we're looking at tech in agriculture instead of looking at what are the agriculture problems that yeah. tech needs to solve. Are there maybe countries that you can borrow from very fast before you talk about how we can use agri-tech to solve climate change? Are there countries that you'd say, uh, um, if we yes. use a model of like Germany or Mexico, we can really move ahead very fast? I think um, to compare apples with apples, we would need to look at what has worked probably in the smallholder ecosystem in Africa. Right. And then you realize that a lot of these um, startups and innovations are still at a very young age, you know, yeah. we are yet to get that technology that has blown everyone away and smallholder farmers are out of poverty. So yeah. many of us are actually still at the very early stage. Getting right. agriculture investment is still minimum. So we then sort of look at what has worked outside of the continent. And then a good example is Israel, for example, you know, where right. you look at how they have used technology to actually produce and export in a country that is actually, um, you know, very dry. You know, so right. all this technology. Somebody said they, they rarely see the rains. They rarely see the rains and yet yeah. they're able to export. And so you ask yourself, how are they able to do that? Egypt as well? Egypt, Egypt, is, right. Egypt is, doing, is doing well uh, when you look at that. So I think those are some of the examples that we can see uh, are happening. I think if you look at Europe and America, those examples don't really hold water for us because uh, they have a very different uh, starting point. You know, mm. they have minimum acreages of 10, 20 hectares, right? right. Uh, you would never get that here with a smallholder farmer. You have very deeply entrenched subsidy programs from the government that is not just about fertilizer, you know, right. you subsidize up to the consumer level. So right. all that, you know, it's unfair competition that is out there. And of course, those are some of the limitations again that you realize we are fighting to produce for not just the Kenyan market, but for the export market. Right. But our competitors are able able to produce much more efficiently and effectively because of just the economies of scale they're able to enjoy. And right. now if you look at the policies that come in, the free trade agreements that we have between Africa and Europe, for example, right. allowing European um, businesses our to export right. you know, their products into Africa, into Africa. yet yeah. our smallholder farmer is not able to compete Recently with the small maize, farmers. You know? yeah to subsidize you know unga for ourselves you know it's right. ridiculous and so you realize that we are we are fighting so many battles and so we are still in the firefighting mold and yeah. then we're not able to see the whole forest we just see the trees in front of us at that point do you think covid contributed to uh some of these uh, problems because initially when you look at the history of agriculture in our country it seemed like it was a little bit stable mm -hmm. but then as we advance even more in tech it seems yeah. like it, it's getting more problematic and more problematic um so let me talk about one of uh, the opportunities that came amidst this uh tragedy of covid okay right. that now it is a bit easier for people to understand what digital can do in ag so digital right. for agriculture is now something that people are willing to appreciate, that people are willing to appreciate e-extension services. I do not need to have 50 people out there in the field pro giving information to farmers. I can, I can monitor my field based on satellite data and remotely sensed IoT devices. All right. this is now available because or due to COVID, because now we've been able to expose what digitization can do for us. Right. At the same so time- it's an opportunity in It is an ones. opportunity. Yeah. At the same time, you know, it sort of pulled the rug off our feet because right. it sort of took away the capital that we could use to actually invest in these technologies. Right. Many people saw job cuts, people went back to the farm, not to grow for export and to grow as a cash crop, but to actually just to survive. Right. And so you have very little money going in you see that uh, little money is flowing in terms of finance loans into the agriculture space. So right. it's a double-edged sword, you know. Right. It took away a lot from us, but it exposed opportunities which now are being appreciated by not just government, right. but also private sector, which is the cornerstone of actually seeing how this could thrive. Right. Yeah. Uh, before before we, we, we talk about our second last question, uh, we had behind the scene i was trying to describe to you like uh nowadays you don't have to like go to the garden you can buy some uh pots mm -hmm. and uh, uh, 
buy soil as well. Yes, <laughs> You can exactly. go buy different yeah. soils yeah. and then you plant your maize in there. You can even have it in your bedroom or yeah. in your balcony and still you're farming in another style. Mm -hmm. Do you think that's also another alternative that's actually emerging, especially in this uh, agri-tech era? Um, I think the solutions, you know, these vertical farming solutions, yeah, exactly, right? Vertical uh, farming. You know, they help you um, reduce cost of living, for example, because if you have a small apartment or if you have a small space, a kitchen garden, that you can, you know, reduce your cost of buying, uh, you know, um, groceries already helps you reduce. So I think that is important and it can get better. You know, you can get more efficient with how you set up your vertical gardens and all that. So I think right. there, is a, there is a niche market for that, looking at how agriculture can be pra practiced in the, in, the, in the urban spaces. Right. But it's not going to solve the problem of food security because mm -hmm. then you need to look at scalability. Yeah. And uh, many people in the, in, the, in the urban areas, you know, they would then go to work, come back in the evening, don't really Buy have time to... Buy everything from the supermarket. You know, don't have time to tend to, yeah. to it. So you realize that right. the best case scenario is that we actually aggregate land and grow on larger pieces of land okay. and that was probably a better solution but you cannot wait for the best solution to come so that you solve your problems right. you need these solutions that can help you at least reduce cost of living even in urban areas all right um now matters climate change and global warming of course we have just come from um a very extreme you know uh, i'll say it was an attacking you know weather mm -hmm. condition uh drought Many lives were lost. Uh, many lives were lost as well. I remember there was a point when Jill Biden came in and she tried to, mm -hmm. you know, give funding that will aid women that are, you know, uh, have been affected by severe weather conditions. And now, right now, we are back to now. It's flooding. Yeah. So how can we how can we curb this in terms of uh, climate change and using agriculture? So. Wow. Okay. Let me look at how I could maybe summarize. The, yep. you know because climate change again opens so many opportunities and the challenges that we face let me talk right. about the opportunities that climate smart agriculture is the future of agriculture okay. that we need to find out what are the improved seeds to be used to grow you know some we we were used to maize that will take nine to twelve months to mature okay. these days we have early maturing varieties of six months we have drought tolerant uh, crops you know such as right. sorghum which can be used you have um, you know all these opportunities where you look at climate smart agriculture in okay. terms of not just the seed but also looking at um, the practices themselves um, regenerative agriculture uh, minimum tillage so that you can basically not disturb the soil so much carbon sequestration right uh, yeah. right now there is a lot of hype let me say around carbon credits and how farmers can participate in carbon credits and you know unfortunately it is what always happens when there is a hype about a technology and then you have the guinea pigs are the smallholder farmers again because you sort of portray the vision of a farmer making more money through carbon credits and yeah. actually it's not the reality because no farmer will wait for over two years to get paid out a very small small amount of money because they only produce per acre right. and the numbers that are being used are hectare numbers you know that you can see in uh, large-scale farms so I think climate smart agriculture looking at how we can use agriculture to sequester carbon to help fight global warming are right. some of the key activities but the question is why should I do it for the, mm -hmm. quest the question for the farmers, why should I care? Yeah. Because from where I am, I have been struggling with so many things. And if you now tell me there's another struggle called climate, climate change, change, I can't yeah. see it. Maybe yeah. I feel it in a way, but uh, what would I do? You know, what yeah. do I get from it? So looking at what is the opportunity there in terms of saying climate smart financings, uh, provide farmers who are engaging in climate smart agriculture, carbon sequestration, easier access to finance. Uh, we've been talking about flooding for so long, you know. Uh, yeah. There is no year when rains come and we don't talk about flooding and yet there are ways that you can use technology. Things like you know, water harvesting. Water harvesting, yeah. setting up dams, making up irrigation schemes across these areas because these are known facts and technology can help help you actually foresee this happening and how you can solve. So I think those are some of the ways that we can fight climate change. But most importantly, you need the army of farmers behind you to rally behind you to fight climate change. But they will only do it if you answer the question of what is in it for me. 
right. it might sound uh, very Which is a good question. You know, <laughs> egoistic, but right. that's the reality we are in. We expect so much from these farmers right. and we are ready to give so little. So right. help them answer that one question. What's right. in it for me? Because they are fighting for survival. For yeah. us, we're talking about climate change in big hotels and in big boardrooms, yeah. and yet the person who is feeling it most is out in the field. So yeah. let's help them answer that egoistic question if you might feel it's egoistic. I find it is very legitimate, right? right. Help them say, what is in it for me? Right. And then we can be able to actually tackle this uh, menace. And that means, you know, giving them information because awareness is the first, is the first, is first, first, the first first opportunity. Right. And not just informing them, then taking action because we inform right. them about so many things. We yeah. just inform farmers, ah, there's this opportunity and opportunity, but we don't deliver. Right. And that is where also as government and private sector, we need to do more to right. help and deliver. So not just make them aware about the opportunity, but actually bring the policies and vehicles in place to make it actually happen. All right. Uh, as we finish, uh, we, we are done. Uh, if you are, for example, let me try to make it more creative or make it more even interesting. Uh, if you are picked to give a TED Talk uh, on an international platform, or rather let's just say right in Kenya, TED Talk okay. Kenya, yeah. and they tell you now, give us your intro or your punchline about how it's so important and why it's so amazing to have this conversation about architect and the solutions. And especially this should hit or target the farmers in the interiors. <laughs> just a short talk for farmers. Yes. Just okay. just like thirty seconds of your My intro. My goodness. Yeah. Yeah. So I think um, when I'm talking to farmers, I would want to tell them that we can disrupt hunger. We can help them get out of uh, the shackles of poverty by getting access to finance and output markets more consistently and sustainably to enable them have living incomes. And um, the way we do that is uh, through leveraging on the telephone, the smartphone, the feature phones that they have, the mobile banking opportunities that they have. So technology can help solve so many challenges. And um, for them, the most important thing they need to know is I want your phone to be uh, your best friend to get you out of poverty. Okay. And so it might need you to install an application or right. just use a USSD. Very mm -hmm. simple for you. But through that, I want to guarantee you a living income. Right. Now I've not talked about technology so much because yeah. I'm now in front of farmers. So right. <laughs> I need to <laughs> put that under the hood. But you've nailed it, you've nailed it. Now, uh, if for example, if somebody wanted to reach out for your services, consultations, yeah. where can they find you? Are there a digital platform? Is there a number? Is there an email? Uh, yes. So basically our business is supporting grassroots agribusinesses to reach out and support farmers end to end. So if you are a grassroots business owner and you want to look at how technology can support you build, uh, you know, build your, uh, your business, then reach out to us. You can visit our website www.agribora.com. Um, there you can be able to find a lot of information about us, our contact information, reach out to us, give us a call. Um, you can visit our offices. If you are in Nairobi, we are in Westlands, Raptor Road, uh, Shiriki House. Um, but you can also see us out uh, in, um, at the grassroots. So reach out to your county ward agriculture officer, ask them about Agribora. I bet they know about Agribora and they can be able to link you with our colleagues who are at the county level to be able to help you get on board. And let's use technology to disrupt agri, to disrupt uh, poverty. All right, let's use tech to disrupt, to disrupt poverty yeah. or to end poverty. Yeah. All right, amazing. Uh, uh, and, and I think for anybody who is so curious about, you know, what are some of the opportunities, uh, the solutions, the problems, and how they can be solved, they've definitely gotten very yeah. deep insights. Are you, can I give you a number? It's possible? Um, if you can, yes. Yes, so uh, you can reach us uh, through 0705-859-648. Uh, you'll be able to reach to our colleagues, uh, reach us on Facebook, Agribora254. Uh, yeah, and... Uh, reach out and let's uh, let's interact let's uh, support our farmers all right
Thank you for coming to the show and interacting Thanks so much for having me. Yeah. You're welcome. We have been speaking to Kizito Odhiambo, the CEO of Agribora, trying to paint for us a very in-depth outlook of how to actually get into the agriculture sector and sink in, but most importantly, use technology to expand it, especially when it comes to food production, food security. Right now, the cost of living is just out of this world. You have gotten all the insights. And I think on this note is where we, we end it, but we're going to be paving way for an interesting segment as well, coming up with the Calamy Val. But you can always interact with us at uh, y 24 underscore channel on the gram and any other social media platforms. And mine is a Brian Sakwana. When we take a break, we come back with much more. Stick around.